Hello, good day viewers. You are welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Chemistry Hangout. Today, we are going to be looking at a deduced question for 2021 Chemistry Work Practical. Please, I always say this. I am not saying this is the exact question that will be coming out. You know, we were very lucky during the NECO period. It was the exact thing on this channel that actually came out. And for YEC to be assured that if we could follow the procedures that have been taught here, if we could follow the process that, are, that have been taught here, definitely you are going to answer the volumetric analysis question as the titration very, very well. So please, I want you to pay attention to, to the teachings I'll be doing today so that you can actually be kept abreast of what the question is going to look like. Please, I want you to pay maximum attention because this will actually help you to actually come out and find colors in the ongoing work. So today we'll be taking the titration, which is the number one question, which we refer to as the volumetric analysis. Please, if you are new to this channel, if you are just watching this channel for the first time, I will urge you to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that when we drop any educative and exciting chemistry videos, you will be notified. So you are welcome once again. So let's see what we have for today. Of course, we'll be taking a look at the number one question, which is the volumetric analysis. Please pay attention because if you can actually understand what is being taught on this channel for this work, then you should be able to answer those questions confidently. And that's why we are here to help you to make sure you come out in what in flying colors. So the question, this is a deduced question for the number one. They say A is a solution of 3.80 gram per dm cube of HCl. B is a solution containing 1.2 gram per 250 centimeter cube. Please, I want you to note some keywords here. B is a solution containing 1.2 gram per 250 centimeter cube of, of XOH. Of course, if you agree with me, you see this is a base, but you don't actually know the base because the, the, the symbol for the base is not well represented. You have XOH. Of course, it could be sodium hydroxide, it could be potassium hydroxide, which means if the question is coming in this format, they might actually ask us to get the value for X. Very, very important. When I when I get there, I will explain. Is I put A into the bullet and titrate against 20 or 25 centimeter portion of B with A using methyl orange as the indicator. Record the volume of your pipette, tabulate your bullet reduce, and calculate the average volume of acid. Use. I've told you, if you have watched the last video for NECO, I have said that, that before you do anything at all, you have your table. You follow their procedures, and we have our table now. So let's see how our table is going to look like. We have our burette readings now. We have our burette readings, okay, in centimeter cube. Please, those units are very, very important. We have our final readings, okay. We have our final readings. We have our initial readings. I hope you are following. So for this, we are going to have our rough titration in centimeter cube also why for the sake of this video i'll be doing only three which is one for rub and two for first and for second okay you can actually do three in your centers if you are okay you can do maximum of minimum of three maximum of four plus your rough you are fine with that and please don't forget they said tabulate your bullet readings so they need the table so with the head of your ruler in your centers, in your various centers, tabulate this is very, very important, you know. Just permit me to use the freehand sketching here for the sake of this video. But if you are doing your exam, please engage your ruler, you know, tabulate, very, very important. Tabulate, that, that's instruction given in the stone tabulate, okay? Then we have the, the volume of acid used. I hope you are following. We're going to be doing that now. Okay? We're going to be doing that now. Okay, so we are set now 
for the practical. Very, very quickly, I've done that for Neko. I'll do that again for my hair so that it gives us confidence, you know. This is sodium hydroxide. Of course, they might label it BN in your centers. This is the ACL, they might label it BA in your center, it depends. But they will actually tell you what the base is and what the acid is and the solution now I need. So for the base, this is the base, this is the acid. So the first thing is I will need a funnel. I will need a funnel to actually, which is here, to actually fill my burette. So I'll fill my burette to my zero mark. Very important. Very important. You can feel that. You can feel that. Okay, you can see it's more than the zero. So I release, you know. I release that. Of course, the precautions has been taken care of. Because before I refill, I've actually washed the burette. If you are, if you don't actually understand the precautions, you can check my previous video for the Neko practical. You know, I'm going to wash this with water, then wash with the solution. It's going to hold very important, which is the acid. You know, your pipette too is going to hold the base. We have washed that with water and also wash with the solution. Is going to hold, which is the base. Okay. Now, if you look at this now. We look this on the 0, 0 0.00 mark. Okay, this is on the 0, 0.00 mark. That's my initial readings. That's the readings before we start titrating for the bullet now. 0 0.00 point zero zero point zero zero. So very important to 0 point zero zero. Very important you can see the set using material as an indicator. Put A into the bullet and touch it against 20 or 25. So you need to tell us the volume of the pipette we want to use. For this one, now we are using 25 mil, which is the same thing as 25 centimeter key. So I can have it here. Very important to record that volume of pipette, okay, is 25 centimeter key. 25 centimeter key. Then our indicator, very important, is material inch. Okay. So, please, our the values in our burette must be in two decimal places. For accuracy sake, please, that should be in two decimal places. So, my initial readings is 0 0.00, okay? I want to pipette 25. I'm using 25 as recorded there. I want to pipette 25 of this. So, I'm pipetting 25. So I release a bit, okay? Release a bit. Release a bit. So that's mark, correct. So into my titration flux, very important, which is my. Can I actually use this, you know? Should be using this in your centers, please. Just make use of this. I make use of this very important because it's the titration flux. That's the beaker. This is the titration flux. So we are making use of this very important. So I cover, cover, okay. So your melting orange, which is the indicator, can have just a drop or two, depending on your position. I can have just for me, I'll be using two drops. This is the first drop, okay. And the second, okay. That's two drops of Meti orange. Then I begin my titration. You can see that. So I begin my titration very fast. Please just calm your nerves. There's nothing to worry about, you know. Start my titration. Let me shift so that I can see the readings. Very important to be able to see the readings. Let me clamp this very well, okay? So I'll be able to see those readings of the burettes, okay? So continue titrating. Please pay attention to the to the titration. Very important. I, I, immediately you see you see, you'll be noticing some color change. So you need to be careful with the way you release. 
you see the acid into the titration flux you can see that now okay you can see you need to change color you can see that okay you can see gently gently okay can we see that now correct you can see the color change now can you see that this is the color change now so we take our burette readings here i have 29 for my rough i have 29.40 i have 29.40 for my rough i have 29.40 i hope we are clear i have 29.40 very quickly i can just dispose it here okay just dispose it here and just dispose it here then wash a bit with water put a bit with, with water then i can have this you know i've disposed this this is my my rough now very important so i'll quickly without wasting time you can see now i, I told you something in my last video look at this this 28 okay this 28 and this is 50. if you look at the range it's very close because with the one that is remaining, if you add this, it will be up to, it will be a bit up to 50, which might actually give you problem in your readings. So, so that you don't get yourself convinced, you can just refill. You can just refill again. You can just refill. Okay. You can just refill. You can refill to... The zero zero mark again. Can we feel okay? Please, very very important. The first time I didn't remove the funnel, that's a mistake. So you have to remove the the funnel before you actually start titrating. Please, that's a mistake. Need to remove the funnel. Very important. That's one of the precautions you have to take. So we pipette another twenty five. I put another 25 of the piece. Okay. So very important into the titration flux again. Then we have this running into the titration flux very fast. Okay. Please, you must. Ensure you remove the funnel before titration so that it doesn't increase the volume of the acid while you are actually titrating. So we have two drops of this one and two. Okay, we'll begin our next one. Next titration. Very important. See that. So you already know the range. Your rough will give you an idea of what the range is. Okay. So, so that because you are time constrained, so you run it down gently now, gently, okay, gently you can see that, gently, gently, okay, you can see that now, gently, gently, can you see that now, okay very good okay okay you can see that now are you see so here now our first titration we are having 28.60 we are having 28 28.60 don't forget our initial release will refill so we are having 0 0.0 i hope you are following now so quickly take the last titration Quickly take the last titration, okay, before we now go to the calculation. It's very important. We refill again. The reason why we need to refill is because you see this 28 and you have 50. And if you check the bottom of the the bullet, it's not calibrated. So sometimes when you run it like this and it gets here, you're not be able to take the readings. So it will give you problems. So it is advisable because the range 28 plus another 28 will be giving you around 46. Okay, so you just have to refill so that you don't give yourself issues. So, 
my base again 25 very important 25 Okay, adding it down. Please don't forget to remove your funnel if you want to start titrating. Now I've said that the first one I didn't remove the funnel, so you need to remove the funnel. That's a mistake. Then very quickly again, what do we do? We quickly refill. I might try not to refill to the zero to the zero mark. So, but for for better understanding, let's refill to the zero mark so that we don't get ourselves. Yes, so there's nothing to worry about. This is a very simple practical that we should be able to carry out ourselves without any assistance. Okay, so on the zero mark again, find that will be the last iteration. So let's just add them here. Let's add these two here because that will be the last iteration now. Okay, so all of this. So let's add this here like this so that we'll be obstructing. So let's have our two jobs again quickly. One, two. Okay, that's fine. Then we titrate again. Very important now. We already know the range, so we don't need to worry ourselves. Our rough and our first titration has given us the range. Okay, so you can see it's beginning to actually change color very important you can see that very important now we need to change color okay okay can you see that now very important so let's take the readings wow very accurate i'm having 28.50 here oh wonderful I have 28, which means if I should do the third, I'll be having either 28.60 or 28.50. Okay, this is even 28.60 now because I'm checking, I'm, I'm observing the lower menus cost now. This 28.60, which means if I'm doing the third, I will actually be getting maybe 28.50 or even 28.70, just a bit of difference like that. So, very, very accurate. I have 28. 0 0.60 again and I have 0 0.00. Wow, that's wonderful. So let's have this here now. Let's bring this so that we don't obstruct us because we are going to the calculation aspect now. Okay. Okay. Now we have 28.60. So we subtract now. We're going to have 29.40. We have 28.60. Okay. We have 28.60. Have it together now. So the first thing we are going to do from the question is said, tablet your readings and calculate the average volume of acid use. So what is the average volume of acid use? So the average volume of acid used will be what? The first title plus the second, okay, divided by what? Two. So the average volume of acid used we now be cut to 28.60 plus 28.60 divided by 2. So without wasting much of our time, we don't even need a calculator for that. The average volume of acid used will be 28.60 centimeter cube. Okay, done. 28.60 centimeter cube. Okay. We continue now from A now. The concentration of A in one the I've said this in my last video. If you look at A, they gave you A in gram. If you look at that, they gave you A, the concentration of A in gram per DMQ. Now they're asking you to look for it in what? In mole per DMQ. Sometimes when I give you in mole per DMQ, they will ask you to get A in gram per DMQ. Well, of course, we are not supposed to be afraid or scared of that. We already know the formula that connects those things together. So the concentration of A now, so the A question says concentration of A in mole per DMQ. Okay, 
Now, if you look at this, our A, we know that our mole is equal to what? Our mass over molar mass. Is that not? Yes. So, we are looking for the concentration of A in mole per day. Okay, good. They gave us the mass already. I can calculate the molar mass of HCl. Even if you are giving in mole, if you are giving in mole, they ask you to calculate the mass. Since they gave you a mole, you just multiply by the molar mass. You get the mass. So very, very easy. So, but we need to get the molar mass of HCl first. So we have molar mass of HCl is equal to that. Giving us the atomic masses. Hydrogen is one. Chlorine is not five point five. So we have one plus thirty five point five. Okay. So the molar mass now. The molar mass of HCl there will be thirty six point five gram per mole. Very important. Please, those units are very very important. I mean it's very very important. So from here now we can calculate our mole now. Our mole becomes okay. What is the mass given in the question? 3.80 gram per dl cube over what is the molar mass? 36.5 gram per mole. Can we see that now? So this we can see this. You can see we are coming back to mole per dl cube. So we have 3.80, 3.80 divided 36.5. That's giving us. Our mole here now is, is 0 0.104. I've said that several to three significant figures. Very, very important in chemistry. You express this molarity to three significant figures. So we have 0 0.104. Four what? Let's see. Okay, four one. So four mole per d. Question one. So now the B. It said concentration. Concentration of B in mole per dm cube. Okay, now let's look at this. Concentration of B, look at this. They give us B. Please pay attention to this. They give us B. The B is a solution containing 1.2 gram per 250. When you are preparing solutions in the chemistry laboratory, what we do is we, we prepare them in one dm cube. Like this one now, look at the 3.8. 0 gram per dm cube, meaning this very particular gram is dissolved in 1 dm cube, which is 1000 centimeter cube. But here, yeah, they dissolve 1.2 gram in 250, which is not the standard measurement. Because some students will think this is the mass of B. That's not the real mass of B. This is the mass in 250. You need to look for it in 1000. Even if it is 1.2 gram per 500, per 900, we need to convert it back to 1,000 to get the real mass. Because for B now, a lot of things is missing in B. If we look at B, we don't know this. Definitely, we cannot calculate. We cannot actually use our mole is equal to mass over molar mass. Why? Because they want us to get it in what? In mole per dm cube, which is the mole. And they do not even give us the molar mass. We cannot calculate the molar mass because we have X here. If you look at this, they do not give you the atomic mass of X. So what do we do? We go back to our titration formula to get our CB, which is concentration of base. So we go back to our titration formula because this cannot solve B. Please take note of that. So we use our CA, VA over CB, VB equals NA over what? NB. You are familiar with this, this formula? If you are not familiar with it, I will explain what it is. So our concentration of CA now is concentration of acid. What's the value? We have gotten that 0 0.104 mole per dm cube. Okay? What is our VA? That's the volume of acid. Average volume of acid, that's 28.60 centimeter cube. I hope you are following. What is our CB? That's concentration of base. That's what we are looking for. Our CB is the unknown. Can we see that? Our volume of base, that's the volume of pipette that they ask us to record, that's 25 centimeter cube. Very correct. Why our number of acid, that's in the equation of reaction, if you look at the acid, one mole of ACL to what? To one mole of the base that we don't actually know. So we have one, then our NB is what this one. Very good. So which means if this formula is not working, just these are simple things we should understand. If this formula is not working for concentration in mole per dm cube, definitely 
this will work, this will work. So inserting those formulas, we are going to have CA now as 0 0.104 times VA 28.60 over CB, that's what we are looking for, times VB 25 is equal to 1 over 1. So from here, making CB the subject of formula, we are going to have CB to be equal to this times this divide this. So we have 0 0.104 times 28.60 divided 25. 25. So our CB will be equal to, let's see, 0 0.104 times 28.60, okay, divide 25. That's giving us 0 0.1189. So we can just say 0 0.119. So we can say 0 0.119 mole per DM. That's it. So that is it. I hope you are following. That's it. That's position of B mole per DM. Now, they want us to calculate the molar mass of XOH. Now, please pay attention to that. They want us to calculate the molar mass of XOH. Now, let's come back to this formula. Mole is equal to mass of molar mass. They gave us the mass here in 250, which means I can convert to 1000 to get my mass. Very correct. And the mole, I've already gotten my mole, which is the CB. So I can use this formula to get the molar mass. Because it's a molar mass of XOH. I don't know the value for X. So the mass, I'll get the mass from here. When I get the mass from here, then I will have the mole I've sought for that, then I cross multiply. So we are we are good to go. So using the the C now, the C question. Now don't forget, this is not the real mass. I've said that. So what do we do? If you are giving us 1.2 gram in 250 centimeter cube, that's what they gave in the question. Please pay attention to this. Sometimes the question might come like 1.2 gram per dm cube. If the question comes in 1.2 gram per dm cube, then we use the value like that. You understand? If it comes 2.4 gram per dm cube, meaning per dm cube means they absorb it in one dm cube, which is 1,000 centimeter cube. So, but now, yeah, they are absorbed in 250, so we need to convert. So, in 1,000 centimeter cube, we are going to have x, okay? So, our x will be 1.2 times 1,000 divided 2. So our x now, we're going to get the real mass now. So 1.2 times 1,000 equal to divide 250. Then we have 4.8, 4 4.8 gram. Can you see that? So the 4.8 gram is the mass of B now in gram. Now look at this. Very, very important. Please take note of this. If you don't have per 250, per 500, per any volume, we can we use the mass like that. The reason why I'm converting here is because of it's in 250. But if the question comes with in 4.8 gram, ah, we use it like that. We don't need to convert that. Okay. Now coming to this, now I want to use mole is equal to mass over molar mass. I hope you are following. So now I have the mass, can you see? I have the mole, can you see that? I can get the molar mass. So please just pay attention to this so that you can get that. So molar mass, so our molar mass here becomes what? Because mass over mole. I hope you are following. Becomes mass over mole. So our molar mass becomes, what is the mass now? 4.8 over what is the mole? 0 0.119. Can you see that? So the, because this one is in gram, okay? This one is in gram per dm cube now. Then this one will be in mole per dm cube. I hope you are following. So from there, this will cancel this. Then we have gram per mole as a unit. So our molar mass now, what will be the value for our molar mass? Our molar mass now. The value for our molar mass, let's see. 4.8 divide 0 0.119. So we are having 
let's have to to one decimal place because this molar mass of course this molar mass so we can have to one decimal place so this 40.336 so let's have as 40.3 so our molar mass will now be 40.3 the unit very very important gram per 40.3 gram per mole. That's the molar mass of air. Now, they now say the relative atomic mass of air. So, from the relative atomic mass of air, I can actually guess the element. When I get the relative atomic, if I get the atomic mass of air now, I will know what this base is like. Okay, so let's have this off. Let's have this off. Very important. So, from here now, now I have. The relative atomic mass of S, that's the, the deep question. The relative atomic mass of X. Okay. Now, from here now, we know that our XOH is equal to what? The molar mass now is 40.3. I hope we are paying attention. So we want to get the atomic mass of this. So this becomes X plus they are giving us oxygen. In the question, where's that? They have given us oxygen is the question. We have brought that. They gave us oxygen to be 16, okay? Plus, they gave us hydrogen to be one. To be one. So, which will be equal to 40.3. I hope that I'm paying attention. So, our X plus 17 will be 40.3. Okay, so X becomes 40.3 minus 17. So, X becomes what? 40.3. 40.3 40.3 minus 17 Can you see that? 23.3 23.3 And if you have not forgotten, there is an element in the periodic table that have the atomic mass 23 How was that? Sodium Wonderful Can you see that? That's sodium, meaning X Yeah, is what? Sodium Nitrosa they are very correct. So X here is sodium hydrogen. So our X, the relative atomic mass of X is 23.3. Even if the question, if they gave you sodium hydroxide, let's say for example, they gave you sodium hydroxide and they gave you HX. Can be HX and they gave you this sodium hydroxide. We still follow the same principles, the same steps, which means what we'll now be looking for will now be the molar mass of this. After getting the concentration of this, we are going to get the molar concentration and the mass, then we what? We do the same thing to, to this. We get the molar mass, then we equate. We are still going to get the same thing. So it's either they, they give you HX and they, they give you sodium hydroxide or they give you XOH and give you HCl. We are, we are going to always use the no to look for the unknown. So that's very correct. Our relative atomic mass of X is correct. Because our X is giving us 23.3, which is approximately 23, which means this X is what is so is sodium. Very, very wonderful. Then the last one, the mass. What is the mass of HCl in 20 centimeter cube of the solution? What is the mass? Of course, that one is that one is easier because 3.8 gram is in 1,000. This one is showing us that 3.8 gram, you dissolve it in 1,000. So they are asking if you dissolve it in 20. What will be the value? Very, very simple. So we have if 3.80 is in 1,000 centimeter cube, okay? Then 20 centimeter cube will be what? Will be x. So from there, what do we do? We cross multiply. So we are going to have x to be equal to 3.80 times 20 divide 1,000. So we have that. 3.80 times 20 divide divide 1000 has given us 0 0.076 gram. I hope that follow me. So because they said what is the mass of ACL in 20 centimeter cube? The mass of ACL in 1000 centimeter cube is 3.80 gram. So what will it be? In 20, that's it. So 3.80 gram in 1,000. Then in 20 to be x, we cross multiply. I'm going to have this times this divide this. This times this divide this, which is what, which is this. So pay attention to this, please. 
practice this practice this very well if you have questions you can actually let me know via the comment section via the comment section box you can ask your question there okay so the question can come either they omit this or they omit this if they omit this they will give you all the details of this for you to calculate for that one but you know when they omitted this they gave us information when they omitted this now they gave us information about this to get this and that is that for the wired titration practical which is number one please you can share this video to your friends some of your friends that are writing this exam far and abroad you can share it to them and if you have not subscribed to this channel please i will urge you to actually subscribe to this channel so that when we drop an educative videos like this that will help us educationally we can actually benefit from them so thank you god bless you